Okay, um, so where we're going next uh, with our um, problem is, so we have our differential equations coded out. And basically what we want to do is um, we are going to need to use something called um, psi pi integrate. And this will basically um, help us calculate the system of or, uh, our differential equations, um, that very um, height of the fluid with time. And basically um, just uh, outline uh, or underlining this um, psi pi integrate uh, solve IVP that we're going to be using. It basically is going to take in some functions um, that, um, or it's basically going to take in a function that has an independent variable, and it also will have an, a dependent variable um, that is uh, in a vector. Um, it will also um, take in a time span, so it will start from zero and go to a certain time that we want to calculate our flow rates. And then it will also take in um, our initial conditions. Um, which will in this case be our dependent variable of height and um, and then we'll also be using a method um, and it will also need to be having a dense output um, of true and which we'll see allows us to um, evaluate uh, our result at specific times um, so but we're going to first start this video um, with uh, just getting our imports down um, in order for us to uh, begin to solve uh, this differential equation so um, basically what we're going to want to do is basically what we want to do is first we're going to just go ahead and go from oh, I'm not clicked up on it we're just going to go from and we're going to end up having uh, psi pi and then it's going to be this is how we import our solve IVP so from psi pi dot integrate and then we go uh, I believe we do import uh, solve underscore IVP. So this will um, imp give us our import and, uh, and allow us to use this solve IVP uh, sci pi um, in order to solve our differential equations. Um, so where we're headed next is we need to just go ahead and also um, import uh, numpy uh, as NP and we also, uh, I guess, actually, we wanted to use, uh, I think we're going to end up using Jax, so we want to do uh, jax.numpy and we'll as jnp, and then uh, we'll import Jax next. So basically, this is going to allow us to do uh, automated differentiation, uh, which is uh, pretty helpful, uh, and Jax is a very powerful tool. Um, created in Google uh, Collaboratory. Um, and then eventually we're going to end up plotting our differential equations and our um, dependent variables um, in our, uh, with respect to time, which is our independent variable. So um, we're going to need to make some import for our plots uh, initially. Um, so what we're going to want to do is we want to do import. Um, uh, actually, we don't do import. We just do from plot we uh, dot uh, subplots so this will uh, allow us to import uh, the subplots from Plotly and then we are going to have um, import uh, make underscore subplots so basically this will allow us to um, make our plots and I'm going to backspace that and then next what we want to do is we want to import our graph objects so we'll end up importing uh, Plotly dot graph uh, objects or I think it's graph underscore objects um, and we're gonna um, just import these as geo so we're basically just making an abbreviation for graph objects right there and we have import plotly dot graph, graph underscore objects as geo and we are going to now we want to do is basically if we want to just customize our graph our plot to make it dark um, we can just um, import uh, plotly dot io um, as pio and then we'll import um, basically making our plots dark so we have uh, pio templates so we basically extract these templates from uh, plotly 
and then we make our default template instead of making it um, bright and like white we are just going to uh, have it go completely dark so this is completely optional but um, it makes it just look better our plots look better so um, we're going to shift enter that and basically what this is going to do is allow us to um, set up our plots later um, and this will be helpful for when um, we end up plotting so we don't have to do these imports later and next uh, we're going to basically uh, we'll go ahead and shift enter this basically what we're um, going to be looking at in the final problem is um, from our differential equations well basically we know that um, the cross-sectional area is also going to change with height we're going to do a few tests when it's not changing with height but we will need to set up a function that does calculate the cross-sectional area um, in terms of a given radius um, and a given height because it will change as the flow rates and height are changing. So basically to do that what we need to do is we, now we need to um, define our variables and um, basically we're going to just create a function for later for this one. So we're going to just go ahead and define it and we're going to define it as our cross-sectional area because this is basically what uh, we're trying to figure out. So we'll have h and this will be terms in height and radius because these are the two parameters that we need to uh, uh, take in. Um, basically, we're going to be giving these two parameters and we're going to be calculating a cross-sectional area in terms of height, and that will go into our um, uh, equation. And what we calculated in, this, uh, in the last video, uh, we know that um, we can just kind of put this straight in. So we're going to just go ahead and do a return, and then we'll do a jnp uh, dot pi, and then uh, we just multiply, or we do return, not dot, and then we do return jnp dot pi, uh, just that's how you import pi numpy, and then you do a uh, radius, then you have your radius squared, or sorry, yeah, your radius squared, and then that would be times your height um, minus, or sorry, not your height, your radius minus your height, and then that will also be uh, squared. So we're going to be um, putting that equation in. Pretty simple equation, um, but this will be calculating our um, cross-sectional area and which terms we need um, as a change of uh, height of the each tank. So we'll go ahead and just shift enter this. And now next what we need to do is, since we're going to be solving this numerically, uh, basically what we need to do next is we need to define all of our variables that we have. So we can first go, what else do, what do we need? So we know we need the radius of the first tank, and we know that that will be 4.0. And you know our radius of the second tank will be, so we're going to call that R2, and we know that will be uh, 2.0. Uh, what else do we need? So we know we need, hmm, we need our area of of the pipe that's leaving the first tank and going into the second tank. So we're going to call that A12 and we're going to set this equal to 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And we also need the area of the pipe leaving the second tank, uh, which will be area 2. And we're going to call this 0 0.2 as well. And now we need our initial conditions because like we explained uh, in the first video, we're going to need uh, initial conditions in order to solve the uh, system of, di of differential equations uh, with our SciPy integrate solve IVP right here. So now we need to specify our initial conditions. Um, and in this case, we're going to specify it as heights. Um, sometimes you can also specify them as flow rates, um, but that would make it a little bit more complex. Um, in this case, if we specify them as heights, it, we are able to um, basically specify the initial conditions of the height of the fluids, and that will allow us to calculate the initial steady state flow rates. So that is where we're headed. Um, but basically, we're just going to define these initial heights. We'll call um, height 1, our initial height, we'll call this H1i, and we're going to call this, um, we're going to say this is 5 meters, and then we're going to say the H2 initial we're going to say that this is 3 meters, so 3.0. So um, these are our initial conditions. And uh, we're also, so if we notice in our equation um, from the last video, part B, we noticed that um, we had a um, repetitive, when calculating our, our uh, steady state flow rates, we noticed that we had a um, repetitive uh, thing in our equation um, that was basically the square root of two times the uh, acceleration due to gravity. So we're just going to create a little shortcut right here 
um, because it's going to basically make us so we don't have to type this in every single time. So um, basically we're just going to call this uh, SQ2G um, for the square root of 2G. And basically this is going to be the JMP.SQRT and then that will be square root and then this would be 2 and then times 9.81 because 9.81 is the acceleration due to gravity. So um, these are our initial values and um, this will um, this little shortcut will help us uh, with the efficiency of writing our equations. And now we're going to write our equations uh, that calculated uh, that we calculated in part A, um, which was the initial flow coming out of the first tank Q12, and the initial flow coming out of the second tank, uh, which was just Q2 uh, initial. So basically, we're going to write these equations. So for the first tank we have, uh, we're going to say Q12, and this will be initial, and we'll say it is um, equal to, if we go back to that equation, we know that it's the area leaving the first tank, the pi area of the pipe leaving the first tank, going to the second tank, and we can say that area is times, and we know that we have the, we need the JNP dot sign, and then we need our um, to adjust for the sign, like we mentioned in the last video, of our difference in heights. So we have the H1i minus our H2 initial. And then what we need next is we can just multiply that by uh, the our square root of um, JNP, our SQ2G, our JNP square root of um, the 2 times acceleration due to gravity. So we just do times SQ2G. And then we multiply this by the JNP, uh, and this is basically just putting in the square root, that's why we do ed numpy. Um, so we do JNP.SQRT, and then this will be of, we want to make sure we don't have a, abs or a negative under the square root, so we do JNP.ABS for absolute value. And then we have our difference of heights, so we have H1 initial, and then minus H2 initial. So this will be our equation for the flow leaving the um, leaving the first tank and going to the uh, the going into the second tank, um, and then we can calculate. We can also calculate our flow uh, leaving the second tank um, initially. So we will call this Q2i, and we know that this was just equal to the um, area of the pipe that is leaving that second tank A2, and we know that this is equal. We can also do times SQ2g. And then we do times JNP dot SQRT, and in this case we just had um, the second height of the second tank, or the height of the second tank. So we can go ahead and enter that. And um, since it's a mass balance, uh, we can also assume a few other things uh, related to this problem. Um, but basically, um, Basically, we can assume, since it's a mass balance, we can say that the initial flow, because there's going to be a flow going into the first tank, and there's also going to be flow going into the second tank. And that flow going into the first tank, we can uh, we can just call that Q... Um, what do we want to call it? We can just call it Q1 initial. So we'll say the Q1 of the initial, so the initial flow going into the first tank, we'll say that that's equal to the flow leaving the first tank, so that would be this right here, this uh, Q12 initial. So we'll say that that is equal to um, the Q12 initial, and we'll say that will be um, minus um, the flow, or sorry, we can just say that it's equal because those are the only things that are going to leave in the tank. So that will be uh, it for that. But we also, for the second tank, we know that the there's flow going into the second tank, um, and we'll call this the initial Q2. So we'll say that the Q2 initial, um, we can say that this is equal to the uh, flow leaving the second tank. So we have our mass balance, we have our flow leaving the second tank, Q2i. And we can say that this can be subtracted by what's already flowing into the tank. So from tank one, we, all, uh, we have a flow coming in from tank one as well. Um, so we can just subtract that um, in order to get our balance. So we have our flow coming in from uh, tank one, which is be Q12 initial. Um, so we can say that would be the um, equal to the flow that's going in. And this will help us calculate our initial steady state flow rates. And um, 
So if we just like want to see these flows, uh, we can print these values. So we're going to just go ahead and do, just do a simple print statement right here. So we're going to go print and then we'll go F, the F string. Oh, I forgot what this is. F string. So then we can say our Q1 uh, um, initial. We can say that is equal to, and then we need our braces. We can say that is equal to Q1 initial and close the braces. And then we also have our Q2 initial. So in order to print this one out, so we can see it, we have Q2 initial. Um, we can say that's equal to, uh, we need a braces. Um, then we just put that in the string Q2 initial, and then we close the braces. And so we can go ahead and shift enter this. So basically, um, these are the flows going into the first tank. This one, this first one is the flow going into the first tank, and this one is the flow going to the second tank that allow us to have these um, these initial conditions of our heights in the first tank being five meters and the height of the second tank being three meters. So basically, these are what allow us, to, um, these are our steady state values that, um, these are steady state initial values that allow us to have um, those specific fluid heights. And next we want to write a function that's going to end up calculating the right hand side of our equation. Um, and this is what we're interested in because the solve IVP uh, integrate um, uh, basically needs to, uh, its job is to calculate in the differential equation system, its job is to basically calculate the right hand side of an equation. So we're going to go ahead and create a function that will um, calculate this right hand side of the equation. So in this case, our right hand side from the last video is our change in height over our change in time. So we're going to call this function dhdt. And then, excuse me, and basically if we want to make this a little bit, uh, our code a little bit cleaner um, in the f um, upcoming next lines that we're going to write. Um, we can basically specify um, the H1 and H2 uh, as this. So basically we have our H1. Um, uh, we can specify this as, um, since Python indexing starts from zero, um, instead of having to write out this H uh, index of zero every single time, we're just going to, we're going to set H1 equal to that in order to just make it look better. And so our, we can also set our H2 equal to H and then uh, one, and one being the second index since py Python um, indexing starts from zero. So this will basically clean up our code and make it a little bit nicer. And um, so now what we wanted to want to do is uh, to basically copy down uh, these equations that we uh, already have up here. And the reason for that is because these are going to go into our differential equations, um, and which we calculated in the last video before. And there is one difference. So we're going to put this uh, right under here. So I'm just going to um, paste that right in. Um, but there is a slight difference that we have here. So basically, um, first problem is that I can't get this to indent correctly. Um, but basically what we have here is we, we just calculated the initial um, steady state flows in order for us to have our initial additions of heights being five and three. Um, but now we're going to end up varying it with time. So in our differential equation, we actually don't want these to just be set as the initial. So what we're going to do now is we're going to want to delete all of these i's. And we're going to just basically create new variables in order to um, specify, or not specify, in order to be able to um, vary the time later on. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, we just um, delete the i's in our, out of our equation and we have um, our new equations for our um, right hand side. And uh, we can just shift enter this. Uh, go ahead and, oh, look, looks like I missed a colon there. We need that for our functions. Uh, looks like I, it needs to be right here. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Oh, um, oh yeah, right. Okay. So, uh, when we use the SciPy, uh, optimize or sorry, SciPy integrate dot solve IVP, 
We explained at the beginning that it needs to have an independent variable and dependent variable. So the first thing that we have to specify is the parameter of our uh, independent variable. And in this case, that's going to be time. And then the, our dependent variable in this is going to be h. I completely forgot about this step, but this is uh, important. And I believe this should fix our um, function. Yeah, so basically the um, scipy integrate um, solve initial value problem, it needs to have independent variable um, based off of time. So we just added that in and we should be good. And now what we want to do is we're going to create a two functions, two more functions, and these are going to end up calculating our flow rates into the first tank and into the second tank. And we'll have these um, as a function of time and not just the initial steady state. So our, for our first one, we can have our, um, we can define it as Q1 in, uh, and then since it's going to end up varying with time, we need to specify in the function that it has um, um, basically t time. So we're gonna need to specify that it's varying with time and we can do that by just writing it like that. And then we're going to uh, return. So I guess um, there's a few ways we're going to end up doing this. So to make for simple uh, reasons, we can first end up um, testing this um, with just, we're going to say we're not going to worry about um, the variation of time just yet. Um, but we're just going to say, what, can, what, what would it look like? What would our plots look like? And what would the relationship look like between the uh, floor rates going in and the heights? if we just adjusted the flow rate by a certain value. So we can just go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and just say, what if we want to increase it by 10% from initial value? So we can just go ahead and do 1.1 and then times we have our Q in one or it was a Q one in. Yes, so we have Q one initial. What is this going to be? Um, how is that just, this is just going to show us how um, the flow rate changes when we just decide to increase it by a certain factor. So we can do the same thing for the second tank. And we can create another function. Uh, we can just go, go ahead and go define. And we're going to call this one Q2 in. And we want to make sure we um, specify that it's going to change with time. So we have T. And then also we can't figure our semicolons here as well. And then we return. And we can just say, instead of uh, increasing this by 10%, let's just say we decrease it by 50%. So we'll go ahead and go 0.5 times Q2 initial. And we can go ahead and shift enter this. So basically this is just going to end up um, defining our flow rates, our initial flow rates, which we already did. And then basically uh, these functions at first, all we're doing right now is just multiplying by a different factor. And um, now uh, what we're going to do is we're, well, first of all, I'm going to just come back up to this one and I'm going to actually move it up one um, just so it work better with our code. And now what we're going to want to do is return these two functions in a vector um, because that's what we need to do. So we will have return and then we're going to do a JNP array and array and vector basically means the same thing. So we'll have a JNP array. And in this case, we were going to have our uh, Q in of one, or sorry, Q one in uh, with respect to time. And that will be minus our Q one two, what's leaving our first tank flowing into the second tank. And we'll have a parentheses right there. And we also need to make sure we have one right there. And then, so, in our differential equation, uh, we know that we are going to end up deriving the um, cross-sectional area. Well, we already did derive the cross-sectional area because it's going to change its height. Um, so we will actually divide this by the cross-sectional area and we can grab that from our function. So basically it's gonna look like this. It's going to look, we're gonna say divided by our AC cross-sectional area and then with parameters height and, and radius. So we have our H1 and then we have our radius R1. And we can do the same thing with the second tank. Um, but for now, since we're not varying with time, but later on we will change this back. For now, we are actually just going to leave this as a steady value, just for simple reasons. So I'm just gonna say that the cross-sectional areas just for right now are one. 
And we can do the same thing for the second tank. So I'm gonna have comma, and then for the uh, second tank, we will have Q2 uh, in with respect to time. And then we'll have plus the flow coming in from the first tank, and then minus the flow coming in, uh, going leaving the second tank. And then, like I said before, we for now um, we will we'll just uh, keep the cross-sectional area um, not varying. So we're just going to keep it like that. And we also need a, an additional parenthesis, I believe. So we will need to put parenthesis right here. And that should be good. Uh, actually, we do not, we might not need that parenthesis. Okay, so yes, yeah, so just for now, um, for simple reasons, we're just going to leave this um, cross sectional area um, constant. But um, this isn't going to be like this forever um, because uh, in our actual problem, we do want to vary the cross sectional, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the cross sectional area with uh, height. But for just for now, so we can see how the plots are going to lay out, we're going to uh, not vary it with height. Okay, so now where we're headed next is we need to first specify um, what is our time duration going to be. We need to specify a, a duration of time, a time interval from zero seconds to however many seconds we want to evaluate um, these uh, dependent variables over. So we're going to just call that a variable t end because that's going to be the uh, amount of time um, in which we end at. So I, I guess that's not very good wording. That will be the um, that will basically be the amount of time that we are going to be um, solving um, these dependent variables over. So, because uh, when we put it into solve IVP, which we're just about to do right after this, um, we are actually going to need to um, specify that time interval. So, um, that is actually where we're headed now. So, um, we need to now solve the initial value problem. And we know that we want to use, remember our arguments, we know that we're going to have a function, uh, independent variable of time, um, and we're also going to have a dependent variable um, uh, in a vector, which in this case will be our heights as well as flow rates. And we're also going to need our initial conditions, uh, we're going to need our time span, and we're also going to have a method in dense output. So we're going to go ahead and start. So we know that this will be equal to our result. So I'm gonna go ahead and call, um, I'm just gonna set it equal to our RES, which will um, help us store um, um, our dependent variables here in a minute. But basically to solve the initial value problem, we're gonna go ahead and go off and go solve IVP. And then we have our function. In this case, it will be T. Oh, sorry, our function that we created, the right-hand side function was DH DT. And then we need our uh, time interval, which we just uh, said it was 500 to test out first, zero to 500, or we can just say zero to TN, so we can uh, just change it throughout. And then we need our uh, initial conditions, which in this case will be the heights. So we have our H1 initial, as well as our H2 initial. So we'll specify those initial conditions as well. And the next thing we need is our method. So we're going to say method. And we are using in this in this um, case, we are going to end up using a method called Rodao because this is Carlos's favorite method. Um, so we will use uh, Rodao for this one. And then we have a dense output. And we're going to set this equal to true. And this is because we want to be able to evaluate um, our result at a specific time. So then next, what we're going to want to do is we can go ahead and just shift enter this to see. Okay, it looks like I um, had a little mistake here. So we have rest equals solve IPP, um, DHDT, which is our function, zero to T end, uh, H1 to H2, uh, method of Rodeo, uh, and we said that dense output was equal to true. Um, oh, let's shift into that now. Hmm, okay, function object is not subscriptable. 
Okay, so we have our DHDT, which we called it that. Uh, we have our zero to T end. We have our H1 initial and our H2 initial method over Dow, and our dense output was equal to true. Okay, so um, we have an error here. I'm trying to figure out where it would go or where um, the error occurred. Okay, so it looks like we might need, I think we need parentheses right here. Oh, nope. So a parenthesis right there, and I think we need a parenthesis right there. So let's run that again, and then we'll try running this again. Okay, okay, cool, thank God. Um, so basically, um, we can see from this, uh, we can see that uh, it, the solution is integrated in here. Um, we can see that the uh, IVP was solved um, on this line right here, on this SOL line. Um, so basically what we wanna do to store um, the value is we can just say this is the result, and we can say this is equal to RES, so it stores the result in there. And then what we can, what we can do next to um, store our heights in, uh, as deep into variables in these arrays um, is use, um, as we saw in that um, script, we saw the, the SOL is where the um, answer was stored. So we can just say um, SOL is equal to, or actually I'll go ahead and put that in the same one. We'll go ahead and say SOL is equal to, and then we'll say it's equal to res.sol. And then we can say that this um, basically we'll um, store our solution. But basically what we're trying to get at is our independent variable and over a certain time span. So, I mean, what we want to do is um, eventually we're going to end up plotting this. Um, so what we want to do is uh, we want to uh, specify um, we want to specify a, a many different points of time uh, on our graph. Um, so we can do this uh, with equally spaced lines and um, make a plot for our time. Um, so we're basically going to um, add another variable in here and we can call this uh, our time, our plot, our time plot, t plot, and because this will be related to our uh, independent variable time. And then we'll have, if we want it to be equally uh, spaced, uh, like data points, we'll have to do the jmp.win space. Uh, win space. So basically, and then it's going to ask us for the, uh, basically what over what interval and it's, uh, is this going to occur. So uh, we have the start, so it's going to start from zero, and then it's going to go to our T end, and then it's going to go to, so if our T end is 500, uh, it's going to end up going to, um, 501 because if you include the zero it's going to be uh, consist of 501 points not just 500 so we'll go ahead and uh, end up shift entering that and then our solution is stored in the SOL so if we want to see how our um, where our heights are uh, at this point in time we can go ahead and do um, SOL and we can look at the first index being zero and this will give us our heights for the first tank so we can kind of see uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, oh, uh, we actually cannot we cannot see these values uh, just yet because we need to specify that these values are going to be in our plot versus time. So we need to add t plot to that, and then I think this. Yep. So this will show all of our heights um, stored for tank one, and if we would like to see. Um, the ones for tank two, we can also we can change that to one, and these will show the heights for tank two. Um, pretty cool. Uh, but now that we know um, that those uh, data is stored in the uh, this SOL result, um, now we can go off and start creating our plots. So we'll be doing that next. And now that we have these values of the heights stored, uh, we can go off and plot this. Um, so now we're going to make our plots. So first, we're going to end up doing fig. Um, and we'll just do equals uh, make underscore subplots um, that we imported earlier. And this is what uh, I was talking about earlier with the imports. Uh, this is what is going to help us create our plots. And then we're going to have our rows um, for equal just one for now. And our columns are also just going to equal um, one for now as well. And what we want to do next 
is the kind of plots that we, we want to import the kind of plot we want to make. So in, uh, um, in Plotly, um, the uh, plots are, the type of plots are um, called um, traces. So basically what we're going to do is if we want a scatter plot, we're going to do fig.add um, and then underscore trace and then we're going to do um, go and we said this go earlier was the abbreviation for uh, the graph object and then we have scatter um, scatter and then we can say we have the go scatter and then x um, because we're going to want our x values um, which will be our independent variables and we're going to want our y values which will be our dependent variables um, and in this case our x value in, uh, is time so we have our um, time variation plot um, so we can say our x value is um, t plot and we can say that our uh, y values are equal to um, in this case we want to plot our heights that we just stored so we can say our y value in this case will be um, since we just put them into the SOL we can say our height 1 for our first tank will be SOL 0 and then comma and the next that thing that we need is a name for it so we'll say a name equals and this will be labeled on our graph we'll say this is the h1 values uh, that will be plotted and then we will also just say that um, the row um, actually you know we, we can just leave it like this row and if we want to see it should create a plot for us okay so this is basically how um, our first high, uh, height tank is uh, varying uh, we haven't changed the time yet but this is basically how it's varying over um, that specific time range um, from our differential equation. So if we want to do the same thing, we can do the same thing for uh, our second height. So we just uh, copy this and we can just paste it back in, except we need to change this um, SOL value to the second index and we also need to change the name to H2. So this should, yep, so now we have um, the um, H1 and H2 plotted, um, but think about it, uh, the other or the other thing that we can do is we can also plot our flow rates because they're also um, dependent on the uh, change in time. So if we want to do that, we do basically the same thing. We just copy and paste these two, and we can enter them in, and then we go off, and we all we need to do is change our dependent variable R Y in this case. So in this case, our Y is going to be our Q in one for the first tank. So we have our Q uh, one in, I believe. One in is the one that's respect with time. So yeah, so we have our Q one in with respect to time. Uh, so we have our Q one in of T plot um, over that certain period of time. And we also have our name which will be, um, we're going to call this Q1 in the flow that is going into the first tank. And then we'll have our Q2 in uh, with respect to time on our time plot. And we will name this Q2 in. And basically what we want to do now is plot this. And now that we notice we're getting an error. Hmm. So we noticed that we're getting this error here. Um, basically, if we look at our coding, we can see that down here that this t plot takes into variation our independent variable over a long range of 500 different points. But if we go look up at these functions, we can see that it only gives us one. Uh, value for a flow rate. All we're doing is changing it. Um, all we're doing is adding or multiplying it by a certain factor and changing that initial flow rate. So we're getting a dependent variable of one value in our independent variable of over 500 values and this is not able to be plotted. So to fix this we can do something that is going to ramp our flow rates. And we do this by using uh, the equation uh, y equals mx plus b. 
in order to create a linear um, relationship between the flow rates and the time instead of just uh, importing in uh, uh, a certain factor and um, multiplying the initial flow rate, steady state flow rates by that. So to do that, what we need to do is first take the, uh, for the first tank, we're gonna take the uh, Q1 initial. And we can go ahead and then add. So if we do um, the uh, specific time T and we divide it by the maximum time, it's gonna make our graph go from zero to one. Um, so basically what we're doing here is um, we are um, going to ramp up the flow rate and what we need next is we can now multiply it by a certain value in which we want to change the flow rate. Um, but you can see in this equation that it's in the y equals mx, y equals mx plus b um, format. Um, so it ramps the flow rate in a linear fashion. Um, so basically what we need to do now is now we can adjust um, how much we want to change it by. So let's say we'll just have it a decrease of, I guess we'll just say we'll have it decrease to 10% its value. So we're going to go ahead and go Q1 initial times 0.1, oh, Q1 initial. So that will be times 0.1. And then we can do the same thing for um, the second one. So we just, we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this over and delete that. So we're going to have change this one to the Q2 initial plus the time uh, over the um, time interval, um, which is uh, dividing by the max. And then instead of uh, multiplying this by the same factor, uh, I guess we can go ahead and um, I guess let's say reduce it by 0.5 its value. And if we want to reduce it, this is going to have to be a negative, not a positive. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and shift enter this, shift enter this, shift enter this. Let this run for a second and then we'll shift enter that. And now we can see on our plots um, that some stuff has changed and that the um, flow weights are ramped in a linear fashion. In order to see this relationship a little bit better though, um, I am actually going to change the columns of this to two. <clears throat> and then we're also going to separate the heights <clears throat> and the flow rates into two different plots because it's just going to make it a lot more simple and just going to make it a lot better to read. So we're going to have row equals one and we're going to say this is column equals one because then we'll put it on the same plot. And we'll say this is row equals one, column equals one, put it on the same plot. And uh, like this one, we can say row equals one. And then we're going to say the columns equals two to put it on the second plot. And then we're going to say row equals one and columns equals two for this one as well. So we're going to see what that does next. Okay, so now you can see how the flow rates are ramped in a linear fashion. Um, and remember, this is for the cross-sectional area that is unchanging and we want it to be changing. Um, so um, where we're headed next is Basically, to make this situation more realistic is, I mean, we're going to change these ones down, uh, these ones right here from uh, that are just steady cross-sectional areas. We're going to change them to vary with time in which uh, we wrote this um, function up here for. And we can now um, end up uh, putting in and calculating our cross-sectional areas with variation of height and time. And then we'll end up plotting those as well. Um, but next, uh, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to um, introduce a sigmoid function. And this will allow us to um, translate and squeeze our graphs to do different translations on certain regions um, in order to see the relationship um, of height and flow rates with change of time and change of specific times as well. So we're going to head there next. And now that we've shown that um, uh, the relationship when we uh, basically ramp the flow rate um, next, what we want to do is import the sigmoid function make, to make it a little bit more realistic. Um, but before we import the sigmoid function, we need to import a, or not import, we need to basically create um, a new function. So we're going to make a new line right here uh, above these. And we're going to make basically make a switch function. And the switch function is going to have a few arguments that are, it's going to accept. So um, we are going to call it um, a switch and basically going to switch between certain times. 
So we can say um, uh, def switch, and it's going to accept a time. It's going to accept a uh, initial value v1. It's going to accept um, an initial value v2. And so v1 and v2 in this case will be our, will end up being our flow rates. Um, v1 being initial flow rate, uh, steady state, and the v2 being what, how we're going to manipulate that flow rate um, given the problem. So t, and you have v1, and then you have v2. And then you're going to have a specific time that this time um, that um, this switch will occur. So you're going to have a T switch, and we're gonna, and then we're also going to have one more parameter, and this will be uh, one of the more important parameters. Um, this will be the um, uh, how do I explain it? Basically, this will be the the we're going to call it the scale, and uh, basically it's going to be a region um, in which um, this uh, switch occurs and we can adjust that region to see how um, the uh, flow rates are going to change and how fast they're going to change um, at um, given a certain scale. So uh, we have scale and then uh, we have uh, the colon there. Can't forget that. We forgot that a couple times earlier. So and then now we're going to import the sigmoid function. And we can do this um, by going return, and then we go, uh, we import it through Jax. So we do Jax um, dot nn um, dot sigmoid, and nn in this case is neural network. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of Jax, but it's um, basically a very, very powerful method um, um, imported and created, and it's also relatively new, uh, created by Google. So it's a um, very strong. Um, method used in Google uh, collaboratory encoding. So uh, we have our um, jax.neuronetwork.sigmoid uh, and we're going to want to do a few shifts with the sigmoid function. So basically what we want to do is we want to have a uh, first we want to do vertical stretch. So in order what that looks like is basically if you think about a graph like an equation um, or sorry, not a vertical stretch. First, we're going to do a horizontal shift. So if you think about it, a graph, when you want to like shift the graph equation, if you want to shift to the left or the right, you add or subtract. So in this case, we're going to have the initial time, uh, and then we're going to have the difference of the, uh, we're going to have the time, and then minus the time at which we switch this function. So we're going to specify it at uh, two different times uh, with this function. And then what we want to do next is we want to do a, now we want to do our vertical stretch and you could, I mean, vertical stretch or compression. And this will all be based on um, how the, uh, the difference of the two flow rates is. So we can say that the V1, the values V2 um, minus V1. So the values of the flow rate, how that we want to, uh, we can do the stretch by comparing the difference of those flow rates. And then now we want to do a uh, vertical translation, and we can do this by uh, adding the v1, adding our initial value to it. And then the last thing we want to do to um, manipulate our function is to use the scale to do a vertical, uh, to do a compression or a expansion. And in this case, uh, if we would like to do an expansion, we would just multiply this um, change in uh, the t minus t switch. We'll multiply this by uh, our scale, um, but in this case, we will, would like to do a compression. So we're going to go ahead and divide by our scale, and then we want to make sure we have uh, the correct parentheses in there as well. Okay, and I think this looks good. So we're going to go ahead and shift enter that. And um, now what we want to do is we're going to um, end up manipulating these equations um, for our switch function and so we can uh, specify at which times they're going to switch the flow rates and then we're going to set those flow rates at a specific uh, um, value uh, different from their initial value. Um, so that is uh, where we're headed next. So moving on um, we're going to uh, now we're going to import a switch function into these uh, um, 
uh, flow one coming into the uh, first tank and flow two coming into the second tank with respect to time. So we're going to import our switch function into these functions. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to return our switch function and then we need to specify um, we're going to have our t and then we're going to have a q um, initial we're going to have our q1 initial and then what are we going to have as our second value well um, from the prompt we know that we're going to end up multiplying this uh, initial q1 we know that we're going to reduce its value by 80%. So to do that, we just multiply by 0.8. So we have Q, um, uh, the Q1 initial. Uh, yes, the Q1 initial. And then we have our specific time at which this, going, this switch is going to occur. And in this case, we are interested in 100 seconds. And then we are going to set our scale to 1. And same thing for this one. We're going to import our switch function into this one as well. So I'll have a switch. And then I'm going to take this um, from up here and put it down here. So we have our switch. We have our time, our independent variable time. And then in this case, we do have a uh, Q2 initial, and then we're going to, instead of reduce it by 80%, we want to increase it by 250%. So we are going to multiply by 2.5. And then we want to change this to um, Q2 initial, of course. And then uh, this time at which this will be, uh, the flow rate will be switched, um, will not be 100 seconds, but it'll be 200 seconds. And we will make this one as well. So we're going to run that and we're going to go ahead and run time and I'm going to go ahead and run everything. And I'm just going to give it a minute and basically we can see um, how our graphs have shifted. So you can see that with our smaller scale um, that um, our flow rate, the time that the flow rate is going to take to change is going to be a lot less. So we can go up here and we can kind of experiment with some things. So if we want to change our scale, we can go ahead, we can try changing it to something bigger. Let's try changing it to 50. And then we're going to go ahead and just run all again to make sure. So when we change it to 50, as you can see here, when at 100 seconds, you can see that the flow is um, taking a lot longer to change um, for when the scale is much larger. And uh, another thing that we can manipulate is um, I'm going to move this uh, RNT time um, and I'm going to actually move it up here um, to our where all of our other values are defined. So and if we want to test something else out, we can just go ahead and increase this uh, seconds uh, for a longer duration uh, for a longer time interval. So if we want to try it with 2000 seconds, well, we'll go ahead and try it with that. So we're going to go run all see how our plots have changed so you can see they've changed a little bit but now you can really see the relationship so um, you can see that um, 200 seconds uh, that the flow rates um, will change um, a lot slower with our bigger with our larger scale so this is a little bit more of an accurate what would happen in real life because they wouldn't just automatically just switch but in this case we want for our problem we want to show it as a step function so in order to do that we need to make our scales very small. So we're going to go we're ahead and make them 0 0.01. So when we do go off and do that, and we run all of that, we can see how our plots have changed from there. And we're letting this uh, run real quick. So you can see the sharp increase of flow rate when our step function is very small. Um, because, or sorry, when our scale is very small, it basically resembles it as a step function. Um, and basically this will give us our final plots, except we need to do one more thing that we need to take account of that we did at the very beginning. So we know that our cross-sectional area function will be defined as this um, uh, pi times our radius squared and then um, times our, uh, our minus h squared. 
and we basically want to um, import this uh, into our equation instead of just having a steady um, cross-sectional area because we will ha actually have cross-sectional area change over time. So what we're going to do is we'll have a C and then we have our parameters of height so we're going to have H1 and R1 and then we want to make sure we have parentheses around there, yes we do, and we also we're going to need to do it for the second tank, AC and then our parameters, our height H2 and our radius, H, our radius R2 and then we are going to go ahead and run all. Uh, we have an issue. Okay, so it looks like up in our function up here, it looks like we actually forgot to multiply uh, this together, um, which there should be a multiplication, or no, sorry, there should be a um, subtraction symbol right there from our other equation. So we have a subtraction and we'll go ahead and run all and we'll see how this runs and it's taking a little bit uh, longer because we do have a time interval over 2000 seconds so it's going to take a little bit longer to calculate in this case so we'll just uh, give it a minute here and we'll see if it calculates okay and there you go we have our two final plots and this represents the change in flow rate when we change the initial flow uh, steady state flow rates uh, with us uh, using the sigmoid function function uh, with our switch function and uh, for our uh, flow one we'll be changing it by 80 we'll be decreasing it by 80 percent of its value and this will be over a, scale, a small scale in order to show the step function resemblance. So this will be decreasing by 80% of its value, and this will be increasing by 250% of its value. So this graph on the right over here shows our flow rates with respect to time over a certain time interval, and these will show our heights um, of the fluid uh, with respect to time. So um, these plots can be very useful um, just for um, seeing the relationship between uh, uh, the change in height and flow rates and um, this is uh, very interesting actually um, so and there we have it uh, we have an answer here and um, thank you for watching